Hey guys, welcome to another Flutter tutorial video. My name is Tensor. In this tutorial, we're going to be building out a temperature conversion application with Flutter. Now I know after what we've already done, this may seem like a fairly simple application, and it sort of is in some ways. But the reason why we are focusing on this particular type of application in this tutorial is so that we can take a look at input boxes, radio buttons, switches, and how we can sort of choose to build our applications in a different way. First, we want to, of course, build out our framework. With our skeleton, of course, we'll instantiate a material app. Just give it a simple theme, color is green, and then point our home towards a object called temperature app. The temp app class will extend stateful widget because we are going to be dealing with state, of course. Like always, we'll override our create state function and then create another class that will hold our build function and the actual state inside of it. Okay, so now let's define the data that we're going to need to use inside of this application. We need an input value and an output value, and these will make doubles. We also want to have a Boolean value, and this will be for whether or not we're choosing Fahrenheit or Celsius. And because we have these three values, we want to override our init state function, and then we want to give them their default initial values. So our input will give it a 0.0, .0 the same for our output, and then our F or C Boolean will have a true value by default. Now we'll override the build function for this class, and of course we want to return a scaffold. Inside of this scaffold, we'll give it a container for the body, and then for the child, we'll have a column, and of course, inside of that column, we'll have a list of widgets. Now, at this point, I kind of want to do things in a different way than we've been doing them thus far. Rather than building out a fairly large widget tree, we're going to sort of refactor everything into its own variable and then fit it into our widget tree. And the main reason why I'm doing this is because a few people have mentioned that they don't like Flutter because it seems like it's too verbose and that these widget trees can get too complicated. And I sort of understand that sentiment. So I want to show you that there are other ways to approach building out your user interface with Flutter. First, we want to have a text field. We'll call this our input field. And we just instantiate text field. And because we're using this text field to take in numbers, we can specifically say that we want a keyboard type that has an emphasis on numbers. So we use this keyboard type property, and then we put in text input type dot number. We'll also edit the onChanged property. This is a function that gets called every single time the user is entering text into our input box. Now, because we are taking in numbers and because our input value is a double, we can create this try catch block to check to see if we can parse whatever string is being passed into our input field before we put it into our input variable. Now, even though our keyboard is a number keyboard, the user can choose to change the keyboard into a letter keyboard. This try catch block will catch the case where they start to type in letters instead of numbers or emojis or whatever. When they start to type in letters or emojis, we just set our input equal to 0.0. .0. Otherwise, we take in the string that's being passed in here, and then we parse it into a double. We can also give this text field a bit of decoration. We just add the decoration property. And in this input decoration, we can give our input a bit of label text so the user has some context as to what they're putting into the input box. So we have our string, we just say input a value in, and then we have a string interpolation that takes in this ternary operator, which checks to see if our F or C value is false. If it's false, then we put Fahrenheit in. So it'll say input a value in Fahrenheit. Otherwise, we put in Celsius. So then it will say input a value in Celsius. In this way, the string will dynamically change based on which type of value the user is inputting into the input box. Now we're finished with our input field. We can take it and we can put it inside of our columns list here. And we can compile our application and take a look at what this will look like inside of our emulator. Here we've got our emulator and you can see that the input box is actually pushed very high to the top because we don't have an app bar 
in this particular application. If we click in the input box, we are then able to type in numbers. If we try to submit them, nothing will actually happen. Let's deal with the app bar situation before going forward. As with our input field, we can create an app bar variable by simply saying we want this variable to be of type app bar, and then we instantiate an app bar and then put in the property that we want, in this case, just the title. And then we can insert the app bar into our scaffold by simply keying in the app bar property and then putting the variable in for the app bar. So now our application has this green app bar that says temperature calculator and it pushes the input box down a little bit. It's probably worth giving our application a little bit of padding. We can come down to our container and fool around with the padding. I put in 10.0 and this sort of pushes the input box a little bit towards the middle. Now let's create a widget that will allow us to switch between Fahrenheit and Celsius. Flutter comes with various binary widgets. We have radio buttons, we have sliders, and and we have checkboxes and we'll take a look at all of these. We'll put this inside of a container and we'll just call it temp switch. First we'll start with a switch and because it's a switch we'll put a column inside of our container and then inside of our children we'll put a text that says choose Fahrenheit or Celsius and then we'll put our switch below it. The switch widget requires a value parameter and an on change parameter. The value being the value that we want this to be bound to, and then the on changed being the function that we want to execute when the user clicks on the button. In here, I bind the value to F or C, and then the on changed takes in a Boolean, but we can ignore that, and we can just set the state so that F or C equals not F or C. So we just negate whatever F or C is. And you can see as I click it, the text changes from Celsius to Fahrenheit. So this is an okay solution for this particular application. However, while we are choosing between two distinct different things, the slider is a little imperfect because the user's not quite sure whether or not it being on is Celsius or Fahrenheit. Let's try a checkbox. Checkbox also requires the on change parameter and the value parameter. The checkbox itself is pretty basic and it's pretty similar to our switch. We bind the value to the value that we want and then the on changed function passes back a Boolean value and we can use that Boolean value to determine how we set our state. In this case though, we don't actually need to use the Boolean value. When we click the box, you can see the text changes to Celsius, and when we uncheck the box, it changes to Fahrenheit. Again, this is sort of an imperfect solution. The user still doesn't know exactly which state is Fahrenheit and which one is Celsius. Now, in my opinion, the best way to work out this problem is to use a radio button. So we have a text widget above both of our radio buttons. Each of our radio buttons also takes in a Boolean value. We specify the group value for our radio button. This means that this value is bound to this group of radio buttons. We're specifying the group value as our F or C variable. And then we're giving our radio button an actual value itself. So this one is false and this one is true. Then we have our unchanged functions. And in this case, they're taking the value and they're passing it through the unchanged function. So for our first radio button, we're passing false through and we can just take false and set it equal to F or C. And then for our second one, we're passing true through and we can just set F or C equal to true this way as well. And of course we need to call set state so the widget tree knows that we're changing the state. And as we click each of the radio buttons, it also changes our text like it did before. All right, so now let's create the button that we want to have so that we can then input the number and have it output the value after it is converted to either Fahrenheit or Celsius. Like we did with our input field and our switch or our radio buttons, we'll take our raised button and we'll put it inside of a container and then we'll have it be refactored into a variable called calc button. And we'll give it text so that it will say calculate so the user knows to push it to calculate either Fahrenheit or Celsius. 
We also want to set up the onPressed function. And of course, this is going to call setState. Inside of our onPressed function, we can use a ternary operator. And we can say if f or c equals false, then we take input, we subtract 32 from it, and then we multiply it by 5 ninths. If it isn't, in other words, if it's true, then we take input, multiply it by 9 divided by 5, and then add 32 to it, and then of course put that into output. Inside of our onPressed, we can also create an alert dialog. So this is outside of the setState function, but it's inside of the onPressed function. And we can again use a ternary operator to create the content for this alert dialog. So the top one should be input f, output c, and then the bottom one should be input c, output f. And then after we create our alert dialog, we can then call the show dialog function and pass in our context and then the child, which is our alert dialog. So now we see here if we put in 100 in our input box, and we have it selected on Celsius and we click calculate, it will come out and it will say 100 Celsius is equivalent to 212 Fahrenheit. And we can swap it to Fahrenheit. And now it says 100 Fahrenheit is 37.7777 Celsius. We can also make things a little bit nicer by changing how our doubles are outputted. So if we call input two string as fixed, this will then limit the amount of decimals each of our doubles will display as a string. So we want to limit them to three at most. And you'll see that when I put in 100 again, and I click on Fahrenheit, and I click calculate, it will now display the Celsius as 37.778. Another cool thing we can look at is how our application is being painted by Flutter. We do this by toggling Control Shift P and then clicking Flutter Toggle Debug Painting, which I've already used. And you can see here the painting gets a little weird and it shows all of the padding and how the widgets are generated. You can see how the text is sitting on the button, how everything is being rendered. And this is even more interesting in more complicated applications because it shows you the way that the tree is being rendered and all of that stuff. And with this tool, we could make things look a little nicer. For instance, we could add padding to our temp switch container so that the F and C are not so far against the wall. Anyway guys, I know this tutorial was a little bit basic, but I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you disliked it, then by all means downvote it as much as you like. Have a good day.